Hey guys, welcome to today's video. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. As you can tell by the title, today's video is going to be another disappointing products videos slash products I just wouldn't buy again. Products that didn't really work out for me. Of course, I have to give the official disclaimer. If any of these products that I mention are your holy grails, by no means am I trying to say that they're horrible products. They just didn't work out for me and they're just not products that I enjoyed. But everyone's different and everyone's skin is different. Everyone's taste and makeup is different. So don't take offense if I um, include in this video any products that you guys really love. Now that we have that cleared up, um, I do disappointing products videos every few months because then you guys kind of see not only the products I love in like favorites videos and stuff, but I don't really mention the products I don't like here on my channel and I feel like disappointing products videos are the time when I can. I don't really like bashing products um, because I really love makeup and I stand behind all the brands that I'm mentioning here. I think they're great brands. It's just that these certain products didn't work out for me. So I'm going to stop rambling and let's just get into the video. So I have my basket of products here. Um, every time there's a product that just didn't really work out for me, I put this in the basket and it just reminds me to film this video when the basket is getting fuller. So the first product I have here is the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Mascara in the shade Nothing But Brunette. Um, I don't like this thing at all. I thought I was really going to like it because I heard people raving about it when it first launched. Um, this is basically just a brow gel from Wet n Wild and it has like this brown taupey undertone. Um, the color is really off for my brows. Whenever I apply it to my brows, it makes them look like an off color. Even though I don't like the color, that's not the only reason I'm mentioning it. Um, because at first I thought I just didn't like the color and that's why I didn't like the product. Um, but I just started using it, you know, on days that I wasn't leaving the house just to test out the formula. And I don't like the formula either. It makes my brows look like really slick, like I just put gel in them, like hair gel. I'm the type of person who wants that feathery um, natural brow, so I'm not really into like the full on gelled out brow. Even though I use brow gel, this was just something that made my eyebrows look really caked up and like they had a lot of makeup on them. And the color was just really off as well. I wish they did come out with more shades so that more people could use it, but the formula wasn't my favorite either. Next here I have a bronzer. This is the Monoco Shimmering Bronzing Powder. I got this in my December BoxyCharm and I don't like this one bit. I tried it out with you guys on camera when I opened up my December box and I was just not into it. This has a lot of shimmer in it. Even though bronzers with shimmer throw me off like right when I open them, I'm like, oh, I don't think I'm going to like this. Some bronzers that have shimmer I do end up liking, but this was not one of them. It's really patchy, it's hard to build up, and it applies really weird to the face. Um, I've tried it with different powders underneath, and I just don't like this. It's so, so patchy, and it looks really muddy on the face, so I'm not a fan of this bronzer. Next, I've got a palette. This is the Wet n Wild Coming in Latte Eyeshadow Palette. Um, I bought this when I went to the States last summer and I was so excited to use it because I love seeing palettes at the drugstore and this one was super affordable. I think it was like around $5 which is amazing because it's a full palette and it came with a brush. But um, as I started using this I didn't really like it. The matte shades in here are actually really really good which they have quite a few matte shades. Um, and the matte shades are excellent. I still use the matte shades but the shimmer shades even though like they might come off as like pigmented on the eyes, they just don't apply really nicely. They apply chalky, um, there's not enough pigment for me, so I'm not a fan of the shimmers in this palette. Therefore, I don't reach for this palette that much because I just reach for other palettes that are all around good quality. Okay, I have an eyeliner here to talk to you guys about. Now, it's not that I don't like this eyeliner, I just don't like it for certain tasks. Um, this is the Maybelline Line Stiletto Ultimate Precision Liquid Liner and I have a few cons about this liner and then a few pros as well. It's not that I hate this eyeliner, I do like it for certain tasks, but I wouldn't say it's an overall great eyeliner and that's why it was disappointing in my opinion. I didn't like that before you have to use this, you have to shake the eyeliner up um, so that the applicator actually gets liner on it. And also there's not much product on the applicator so you have to dip and shake in a million times so you can get a full eyeliner look. Um, also it's really hard to create a wing with this eyeliner. 
it's very pigmented and very black and it dries matte which is amazing but it's just hard to get a wing eyeliner with this now what I do like this for and I would recommend this to you guys if you're looking for something like this is to really perfect your eyeliner line like on your eyelid and then go in with a different liquid liner for the actual wing I think this eyeliner is great that's what I used it for today I just use it to create a line on my eyelid and then I grabbed another liquid liner and finished off with the wing but this is really nice as a um, nice precision liner if you want a very thin line on your lid. This is the eyeliner for you. Just keep in mind it's very difficult to do a wing and you will have to dip back in quite a few times to get a nice opaque black look. I have another palette here to share with you guys and this is the Pure Cosmetics Buffs Collection eyeshadow palette. Now this is from the brand Pure, like P-U-R-E, not P-U-R. I know lots of people get the two confused. This palette I received in my December BoxyCharm as well, and I was not a huge fan of it. Um, honestly, the mattes are okay. They actually blend out pretty nicely, but the shimmers are hard to work with. You do have to use them wet if you want a really nice look. Um, when I saw this palette in the box, I was so excited because clearly it is a dupe for the Naked 3. But what disappointed me the most about this palette is that it retails for $50 and then the Naked palettes are like $60. So that doesn't really make sense to me that the quality is not that great in this palette and you could just spend a couple more dollars and get the um, Naked 3, which is a lot better quality. So I don't reach for this palette just because I have to put in that extra effort for the shadows to actually work out. And I'd just rather use a palette that I can just use these shadows without Fix Plus or wetting them or anything like that. And if you are looking for a dupe for the Naked 3, I would just skip on this palette um, and get the Makeup Revolution um, Iconic 3. That's a nice dupe for the Naked 3 or the CoverGirl True Nakeds. I think they have like a rose gold one that's very similar to the Naked 3 as well. So there's definitely other options for you guys that are a lot cheaper than this. And if you were looking to buy this palette, I would just spend a few more dollars and get the Naked 3 because it's a lot better quality than this. Okay, I have a sponge to talk about in this video and you guys are probably like, what? I thought the Real Technique sponge was your all-time favorite. And it was until they changed something. I swear they changed something in the formula of the sponge that makes me not like it anymore. I've gone through so many of these sponges and they've always been so great. I just love how they apply my makeup. And the last one I bought um, was this one right here. I bought it in a pack of two and I don't even want to use the other one because I know it's the same. This is just a lot softer than the last sponge I had. Um, they definitely changed something and I've heard a lot of other people say the same thing. Um, it's so soft that it absorbs all the product um, that you put on it to apply to your face. And it doesn't blend everything out as effortlessly. It doesn't give you as much coverage. And also after only three uses, mine started tearing up so bad as you can see here. Um, my old one looked like this about after three months and this looks like this after about three uses. So that was so disappointing that um, they changed it because I loved the Real Technique sponge so much and now I don't like it nearly as much. Okay, this is not gonna come as a surprise to any of you. Um, if you saw my video on the Help Pore Cleanup Mask, you will know why I'm including this product in this video. I tried out this mask in the first impressions that I filmed, which I can link down below for you guys. Um, and I was so excited to try it out because I've heard people say that it just cleans up everything. Um, it rips everything out of your pores, blackheads, and everything like that. And it's like just a great, great peel-off mask. And I used it. I even um, stained my face before to open up my pores. My brother even used it. I've used it times after that first impressions to try to use it differently and get it to work. And nothing, guys. This does absolutely nothing. It hurts so bad because you think it's pulling all the baby's hairs off. But it doesn't even do that, you know? It hurts so much and it can't even pull out a few hairs. It doesn't do anything to your pores. Um, it did nothing so I would not recommend this mask um, if you think it's gonna do a lot Let me know down below in the comments if you've tried this mask and it did a lot for you I would love to know how I can use it differently to make it work um, But the ways that I used it seeing my face and putting this on right after Keeping it on for the 15 to 20 minutes till it's fully dry and then peeling it straight upward did not work It did not do anything for my skin Nothing pulls off my skin using this mask. So this was a pass 
Okay, I have another palette, but this is a face palette. This is the NYX Highlight and Contour Pro Palette. I have tried to use this time and time again. I am just not a fan. I actually do like these two highlight shades right here. They're very um, blendable and they have a nice formula to them. Um, this shimmery white shade right here looks like straight up glitter on my face, so I'm not a fan. Um, this one right here, I don't get the point of it. It just looks very chalky. And the contour shades, I don't like at all. They are so muddy and hard to blend on my face. They just go on really patchy, um, and they just look very off. There's something off in these contour pa powders. Most of the time with contour palettes, even if you apply a bit too much, you can blend them out. These don't blend out, um, and again, they just apply really, really patchy. In some parts, you have no pigment in others. It's like really muddy, so I'm not a fan of this palette at all. Skip on this, save your money, and pick up the Makeup Revolution Contour palette. Um, this one right here has very similar shades as you can tell. They're almost identical and this one is 20 times better. Every time I use this palette and I apply too much I can just blend it out so effortlessly and it looks so natural and flawless and the powders just settle really nice on my skin. And same with the highlight shades. They are really really beautiful. I highly recommend this palette and it also comes with a nice big mirror. Um, but this one was a total pass for me. I'm not a fan of it. Okay, this next product is going to come as a shock to almost all of you if you have been watching me for a while, especially if you watch my best of 2016 video um, because I literally like raved about this foundation in that video and that is the L'Oreal Pro Glow Infallible Foundation. I have come to notice that I do not like this foundation at all. Um, it broke me out so, so bad. I cannot even explain to you guys. I used this foundation for like a straight month. I loved it. It was my favorite and I still love how it applies to the face. I love how it looks on my skin. I love how it photographs. I was going to name this the best foundation I've ever used for the winter time. It just looks so nice on my skin. It had such great coverage. It lasted so long. Again, in photos, it looked amazing. Even flash photography. And sadly, it broke me out so, so bad. Um, for the past couple of months now, I've been dealing with a lot of acne and my face was never prone to acne. I got the occasional pimple uh, here and then, but it was never like my skin is now. And I am 100% sure this is the foundation that caused that because I was um, watching other people's videos and they said the same thing happened to them. They were using this foundation for a long time, they loved it, and all of a sudden it was just breakout after breakout after breakout. I have discontinued using this foundation and I won't be using it again unless I, it's like I need a really nice photo. I'll put this on for just a, like an hour or so. Um, but I will never again use it for months straight so that was such a disappointment to me because I think it's such a beautiful foundation on the skin it sits so beautifully on the skin I think oily skin can use this dry skin combo anything it's just such a great foundation but it breaks me out and it's broke other people out too so I would stay away from this and we have one more product and then we're done this is the essence keep it perfect makeup fixing spray now you can see i've used quite a bit of this um i do use this and i've used it in videos and stuff i use it to wet my brushes to apply eyeshadow i think this is one of the best sprays to enhance eyeshadows and i'll tell you guys that now if you want a spray um that's way cheaper than mac fix plus just to use on eyeshadows this is the one to get it's like three bucks but if you're going to use this on the face beware that it will sting it will burn like it's crazy I apply this to my face after I do my makeup and like right in this cheek area my face starts burning it's crazy and um, usually after I apply a setting spray I like to take my sponge and just press that setting spray in it just helps my makeup look a little more fresh and every time I do that with this it takes off my makeup like I'll press the sponge onto my face and the place where I press the sponge the makeup just comes off you know and I don't like that because I just spent so long on my makeup and this just ruins it and it does not feel nice on the skin at all um I do have sensitive skin so that might be a part of it but I just want to let you guys know um that that's the case but I have been using it with eyeshadows so it's not a waste or anything and it's a lot cheaper than Max Fix Plus if you're just going to be using it for eyeshadows so that's it for this video. I know it was kind of a long one, but I had a lot to say about these products because I do want to tell you guys that there are different ways to use some of these products um, if you want to make them work 
or if you're looking for something different. But the reason I mentioned them today is because they were a disappointment to me in one way or another. Um, so yeah, if you guys like these types of videos, let me know down below in the comments or by liking this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys.